Welcome to A Word for Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us. Each Wednesday, you will find Boggs Family Ministries is here with our host, Davey Boggs. Having you along with us is a wonderful addition. Now, let's enjoy together A Word for Wednesday. Thank you, Brother Devin, and thank you for joining us this morning for A Word for for Wednesday. I hope your week is going great. We're having a wonderful week here in Virginia. Our last week in Virginia for this trip, good Lord willing, we'll be moving on toward Tennessee and then further west after that. But we're enjoying this beautiful week in Virginia. The weather is beautiful. The services have been so wonderful. God has been helping us and we're always so thankful for his help and for his grace. I want to talk to you here about how does salvation work? It's a question that I have been asked many, many times in several different situations throughout the years. As a preacher, talking to somebody about salvation, preaching to somebody about salvation, trying to bring them to a decision Often the question is, how do I get saved? You, you, you say I can be saved, but, but, but how, how do I get saved? And, and I can tell them, you, you believe with your heart, you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And, and I can lead them down the Romans road. I can talk to them about the ABCs of, of salvation. Admit that you're a sinner. Confess that Christ or believe that Christ is the Savior and then confess him as your Savior and you can be saved. Or one of my personal favorite scriptures, I even talked about it last night. I, I love I love this, this verse in 1 John chapter one. If we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's, that's the steps to salvation right there. Confess our sins. Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm not worthy of salvation. I'm not, I'm not good enough. I'll never be good enough to be saved. Lord, I confess my sinful state. I confess the sins that I have committed. I confess the sin that's in my heart. And simply from there, God is faithful. God is just to forgive us our sins at our request. God will, because of the sacrifice of his son, forgive us our sins and, oh, I love this part, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Those are the those are the how-tos, and I could go on and on and on about it. But very often, it's, it's the question in people's minds, not the steps, not, not, not the things we do, because maybe they've heard that before. Maybe their mo mom taught them that. Maybe their preacher when they was a kid taught them that. Maybe they've read it for themselves. Maybe they read it in a track or in a book. It, it's, it's not the steps that confuse them. It's the how. How does he save me? How does this work? The blood of Jesus Christ, believing in his sacrifice, the, the son of God dying in our place. He nailed our sins to the cross. Love held him there. I mean, we just, we, we have all these, all these points of parts of salvation, but how does it work? How does he save me? Why does he save me? What's the, what's the element that I need to grab a hold of that makes it real in my life? Now, if, if, if men and women will just follow the scriptures that I have read and many, many others, he will save you. He'll do it. But that, that overwhelming desire in the heart of some to know the ins and outs and the how. How does it work? 
how does God take my confession and my belief in him, my faith in him, and turn that back to me for salvation? How does that build a relationship between me and God? I just can't grasp the how. Year, years ago, I came across a, a true story, a point in, in American history that helps me with that and has helped several others with that. Can I, can I read some of it to you? This was back in 1939 in the buildup towards World War II. America was not yet in the war. In fact, they were over two years from being in the war, but, but there was a, a buildup of, of defense and, and weapons and there was a preparation. We were already arming uh, some nations, but we weren't in the war yet. But they were building submarines and planes and ships. And in 1939, they commissioned a new submarine. It was a diesel electric submarine built at the Portsmouth Navy Yard in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. It was the USS Squalus, S-Q-U-A-L-U-S, USS Squalus. It was commissioned on March 1st, 1939. It was in its testing trials over the next couple of months. It had operated flawlessly on several runs. And then on May the 23rd of 1939, they were out with other ships in the waters. And about eight that morning or a few minutes before 8 a.m., they were commanded to dive. They gave the order, the submarine began to dive, but there was a catastrophic failure of one of the valves. It did not shut as it was designed to do and as it had done before. So the ship was partially flooded, but too flooded to stay afloat. Even though some of it wasn't flooded, it sank to the bottom off the Atlantic coast and came to, to, to rest 240 feet below the surface. Now, there were other ships around, so they marked where the ship had went down. The rescue operation went into, went into effect almost immediately. Navy divers and salvaged ships responded quickly. Uh, a, a complete set of miracles. Divers dove down. They discovered there were survivors in there. Now, in the initial flooding, they found out later, the compartments that flooded, there were 26 men who died probably in the first few moments of that ship sinking. But there were 33 people on board that were still alive. 32 crewmen and one civilian. There was, there was a, 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 a test vehicle that had just been uh, invented. It was a revised version of the diving bell. It was called the McCann Rescue Chamber. It had never been used in a real scenario. It had been tested, but had never been proven in a, in a, in a salvage operation, in a rescue operation. But they, they brought that out there, that McCann rescue chamber. And at 1130 the next day, on May 24th, 1939, the USS Falcon lowered that McCann rescue chamber down 240 feet and hooked it to the side of that submarine. Some kind of chamber that had been devised for this connection. And they, they hooked it up. It took 13 hours and several trips up and down, but 33 men, all 33 that remained alive, were rescued by that, that test McCann rescue chamber. It wasn't proven. It was only in its testing phases, but they climbed aboard and were rescued. I don't, I don't remember how many trips they had to make for those 33 men. 
On September 13th, after several long and difficult efforts, they they raised the USS Squalus and they, they actually towed it back to the Portsmouth Navy Yard. They decommissioned the boat in November and renamed the Sailfish. And on February 9th, uh, it was renamed. And on May 15th of the next year, 1940, it was recommissioned and it went to serve with distinction in World War II. But what I want to show you is those 33 men that were rescued. They're at the bottom of the sea. Their lives are in danger. They're, they're going to die. Probably, probably to a man from the captain right on down, they thought, this is it. I mean, you, you don't rescue men from a, from a submarine that has, that has sank to the bottom. But here comes this new thing. It's unproven. It's, 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 it's something you maybe never heard about. This McCann rescue chamber fastens to the side of that submarine and they open that hatch and somebody in that rescue chamber says, come on guys, I can take whatever, three or four of you, five, whatever, whatever it was, we're going up. Not one man that I've read about, not one man said, oh no, no, I'm scared of that thing. I don't know how it works. I, 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 I've never seen that. I've never heard of that. Uh, I, I, I don't know how it works. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my chances here at the bottom of the sea. Not one man. From the lowest ranking to the highest ranking, at the end of 13 hours, the captain came up. He was the last man off ship. Every one of them rescued by something they didn't understand. They didn't know how it worked but not one of them questioned their means of salvation. Can I say to someone listening to me today, you may not understand salvation. You may not understand the, 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 the paradox of a savior, a king, rescuing a pauper. And doing it because he loves us. You may not, you may not get all that. It may not get all in your brain. It's okay. You're at the bottom of the sea, and your chances of getting out are zero until that thing you don't understand comes to you. Don't question salvation. Don't, don't refuse it because you don't understand it. You're gonna die in that place where you are. And Christ offers you salvation. Come on, get on board. You don't have to know how it works. You, you, don't, you don't have to see all the literature that shows you how this thing theoretically will work. Salvation is available to you. Come on, come on, crawl on board. We're gonna take you to the surface. We're gonna take you up there where there's air to breathe, where it's safe to live. Oh, man, my heart is for you this morning. I know you're trying to figure it all out, but you don't have to. It's already been figured out. God invented this rescue chamber. <laughs> God, before the foundation of the world, God invented man's rescue from sin and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus, the son of God, our savior came to rescue us from our sin. We may never figure it all out, but oh, thank God I'm saved. Hey, listen, for almost 39 years, I've been trying to think of new ways to explain it to people. I've been doing my best and I'm trying even harder now to try to explain to people how salvation works because I want them to be saved. But I can't even explain it in a way that they can get it. But I can tell you from personal experience, it'll rescue from the bottom and take you up to safety. Salvation, how does it work? 
And I say, it doesn't really matter how it works. The fact is, salvation works. Thank God for it. Give him your heart. Give him your life. Give him your sin. In return, he will give you eternal life. And that is a pretty good trade. Thank you for joining us. That's our word for Wednesday. Look forward to seeing you next week. That is our word for Wednesday. We are so glad that you've spent a few minutes with us today. If you've been touched by today's episode, please share it with your friends and family. We welcome your questions or comments below or by email. You can find the email address in the description, along with a link to Mile Markers, the website for Boggs Family Ministries. Also, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you again, and we hope to see you next Wednesday.